and welcome to this video tutorial brought to you by tutvid.com. Today we're going to take a look at a very cool technique to create fully vector fire and flames in Adobe Illustrator CS4. Now before I get started I just want to quickly point out this tutorial was or is sort of an extension of our box tutorial. Uh, if you go and find the box tutorial, basically I'm creating this box. At the very end of it I mentioned you know, I added a yellow glow um, that when it was all done, it sort of looked like maybe there's a little fire in the box. And as soon as I stopped recording, I sat there for a minute and I thought, you know what? Let's create some fire coming out of that box. And this is what I came up with. So it's a pretty cool effect. And when I finished, I thought, you know what? That is pretty darn cool. So I'm going to record a video on how to do it. So here we go. I'm going to close up comp. And oh, by the way, the cool thing about this fire is you can easily, and I mean easily, change the color of it to anything you want. This side was actually blue when I initially created it, just to give you a, you know, just a grasp of how exactly you know we can change that. So here, I just switched over to the vertical box.ai uh, file, and I, this is a box that I created using that other video. Uh, you can go check that out. I'll provide a link for it uh, somewhere, probably in the description box, and um, or in the description box of this video that is. And you can go create this box, and once you've done that, come back here, and let's take a look at this. Now, I've deleted, there was a glow coming out of the box. I've deleted that glow. If I want to add a glow to the flames, I will later on. Right now, I'm going to create a new layer. And what I'm going to do on this new layer is open up my brushes panel, and I'm actually going to drag the brushes panel over here. And these are my brushes. I want to, oh, I don't want to do that. I want to select this flyout menu, which seems to be eluding me. There we go, the flyout menu. Open brush library, go to artistic, and artistic paintbrush. And it's opened up off screen here. It is. Now, when you look at these brushes, you probably don't think, ooh, yippee, fire. I certainly didn't. But when you start playing with them and you realize the effects you can create using these brushes, uh, it becomes pretty, pretty cool. So let's take a look at what we need to do. I'm going to choose dry brush eight here. It looks like it's sort of broken up a little bit. We're going we're to start with that one, see what we can do with that. I'm going to move artistic brushes back off screen, and I'm going to double click this brush in my brush panel. I'm going to change the direction to up. Hit OK. And now I'm using a tablet. If you're not using a tablet, no sweat. You don't have to panic. You don't have to worry. You can use a mouse too. I'm going to, however, select the stroke, come over to my swatches panel, and just choose a light blue. I'm going to choose this light blue right here. Now, with my brush tool, make sure you select the brush tool. That's kind of important. We're just going to paint sort of like a, a, you know, a shape going up. Now, that really doesn't look like flames, so I'm actually going to undo that. I'm going to drag in the artistic paintbrush uh, palette again, and we're going to try a different uh, brush. Let's try this guy right here. There we go. Double click on him. Go up. Hit OK. And uh, this one looks very promising. So I'm going to drag up and look at that. That really starts to look like uh, a bit of fire. Before we go any further, draw your first bit of fire and then select it. This is kind of important. Well, not, not kind of important, it's very important. And then I'm going to go to, uh, double click to open up my transparency panel and set this to hard light. You can see we start to have a pretty cool effect. Uh, matter of fact, I'm going to change the stroke color and make it a little lighter blue than it is now. More like that. Okay, very nice. Man, you know, maybe a little darker than that kind of indecisive. There we go. Now I'm going to grab my brush tool and I'm going to continue brushing bits of fire just like so. You can see I'm just going to brush straight up like that and you can see how it is sort of a strange five-headed bit of fire that we have happening here. And we're just going to keep drawing fire, keep making this fire. And uh, so far I'm kind of liking what I've got. It's a bit uh, of a strange shape but no fear. We're going to really start pulling it up the center here. And notice down here at the bottom where it kind of connects to the box, the fire that is, will be coming out of the box. There's really not much down there. So I'm just going to start painting around down here and really just mixing it up so it becomes, you know, it starts to look pretty solid. You can see what I'm doing. Really just mixing it up. Okay? So that looks pretty cool. Uh, I'm going to grab another brush, however. So I'm going to grab an artistic paintbrush, and I'm going to take this guy right here. What is that one? When I roll over, it should give you a name. It's not giving me the name right now. But this one does have a name, and uh, that's the one we want, the unnamed one. And I'm just going to pull some, like, shrieks through this fire. What that's going to do is it's almost going to add this ember-like, you know, streaking those crackling pieces of whatever's being burnt or almost being tossed in the air. You can see it's like these bits of stuff being tossed, and those last few that I put kind of start to make it look a little bit too much like a party confetti or something like that. So I don't want that. I want it to really look mixed up. And there we go. We've got some, you know, maybe odd looking fire. It might be a little bit too big, but don't worry. What we're going to do next is we're going to lock up our background layer and our reflection layer just so we don't mess them up. I'm going to select this entire fire layer. 
what we're going to do now is we're going to, I'm going to show you how to change the color and then we're going to worry about masking it off so it looks like it's actually coming out of the box. How do we change the color? It's pretty easy. I'm going to group all of these paths. You can see here on my layers panel, if I collapse all the rest of this stuff so you can get a decent look at my layers panel, I've got a ton of layers here now. And all of them are just pieces of this fire all set to hard light. Okay, well, I want to group all them together, so I'm just going to hit Command or Control G. It's going to group those guys all into a nice big group for me, just like so. And now I'm going to copy them, so Command or Control C. Now I'm going to create a box, basically. It can be a box, a rectangle, or an ellipse. I'm going to move the brushes panel off screen as well. I'm going to create a big rectangle, just using the rectangle tool. I'm going to create a rectangle. That's the third time I've said that now. Create a rectangle, and there is no fill. There is a stroke, however. I'm going to swap the fill and stroke like so, and I'm going to select the fill, and I'm going to color it, uh, let's go with orange, like that. That looks terrible. It, you know, where's our fire gone? It's disappeared, essentially. Now, I'm going to double click to the right of this in my transparency panel. Now, we've got a mask. Now, I'm going to hit Command or Control F. Remember, we copied all this fire, so we should have that nice shape. Command or Control F, and it should paste it all right in there. And there we have it. Um, I'm actually going to switch the stroke color to white. So it shows through in its entirety. Now, it looks pretty bad. You can see it's just solid orange. How do we change that? It's a matter of changing the blend mode to color. Now, look at this. There we go. We've got some nice orange fire. You could actually change it to hue as well, and uh, it'll be a slightly different effect. I think I actually like hue more. Now, the beauty of this is anytime you want to come and change the color of the fire, come to this colored path layer and just change the foreground color. You can see I can go into swatches now. I could make it uh, green if I wanted. You can see here, green, eh, that's not, I don't really like it. Red, like so. Uh, you could make it brown. You could even make it sort of pink. Uh, really anything you want. We'll, we'll stick with the pink, actually. Just, you, know, you know, actually, we're not going to stick with the pink. We're going to go with red, just because I like red a little bit more than pink. Uh, and it still looks a little pink, but we're going to stick with it. So there we go. We've got our red fire coming up out of the box. Now the last thing we need to do is just mask it to this box. Very easy to do. Um, and the way we're going to do that is open up the box layer. I'm actually going to collapse my transparency and my swatches panel so I can really see what I'm doing. And I'm looking for my front faces of the box. There's one of them. Hey, don't, don't move up on me like that. And there's the other one. So I basically need to move it beneath these two layers here. So our flames need to be moved right in between these two guys. All right, so let's do that. We're going to grab our flames, click and drag, and drag down, oh, drag up, and right between these two guys, like so. And if there's any fire sticking out of the sides, like there is, we just need to go in there with a mask and get rid of that. So let's, let's take care of that real quick. So I'm going to select this fire layer, double-click to open up my transparency panel, like so, double-click to add a mask. We don't want to clip the whole thing in this case. Uh, we want to check unclip, uh, or uncheck clip, excuse me. And I'm actually going to grab the pen. Uh, you know what? I'm going to grab the regular rectangle tool. I'm going to draw a rectangle like so. And I'm going to fill it with black. And I'm actually going to move it over just a tad uh, like so. I'm going to duplicate it, bring it over to the other side. And you can see that it's really kind of rough, um, but you get the gist of what I'm doing. I can actually. You know, take the pen tool and I could go up and around if I wanted, but I really don't want to do that. So what I might do here, now I'm not going to do it just for the sake of saving time. I'm not going to do it, but that really looks pretty bad. So what I may want to do at this point is unlink the layer contents from the layer mask. I just hit the little link there. Select this, and we're going to kind of hold down the Alt or Option key and just kind of shrink it in a bit. You can see it's going to nicely pull us in a bit to keep these hard edges from really forming. Okay, and I'm going to pull in a little further on this side, like so. And give it a second to re-render. There's a lot of strokes it's rendering there. And there we go. Nice. And you can see now it really looks like it's coming up out of the box, just like it should be. If you want to intensify the effect, you can select this entire uh, fire layer, drag it onto the new layer icon to duplicate it. Now remember, every time you do this, you really make the Illustrator document go a little bit slower because you're making it quite a bit bigger. Go to the blend mode and set this to, let's try overlay and see what this looks like. You can see it really, it kind of intensifies the effect and really makes it almost look like, you know, really like it's painted fire. So it's a pretty cool effect for creating flames, and every time you do it, it looks a little different. This time, it didn't come out quite as good as it did the last time I did it, and the next time I do it, it'll probably come out a little nicer than it did this time. 
So it's just a quick way to make fire. I hope you enjoyed it, and please go check out the site. That's www.tutvid.com.